grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your virtual pastor, Bishop McLean, and I'm coming to you with our Lenten reflection. We're so grateful that as we, as we journey through the season of Lent, as we continue to um, navigate through the most sacred and solemn time in the life of Christians, uh, which supersedes race, supersedes denomination, supersedes class. Every Christian believer has an obligation to capitalize or to dive in and to take hold and to allow the season of Lent to come into your hearts. And so the Bible declares that the kingdom of God is indeed at hand. And that is our reflection for today, that the kingdom of God is at hand during this time and during this season with so much going on, with so much loss, and with so much difficulty, we are grateful to God that the kingdom of God is still at hand. That regardless of your personal uh, positions and your personal thoughts and, and how uh, you're navigating through these waters, remember that the kingdom of God is at hand. I just wanna share with you a few words from Romans 14 and 17, and it simply says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so that is, that is what it's all about. Peace, righteousness, and the joy of the Holy Ghost. So I encourage you, men and brethren, as we, and brothers and sisters, and children, and anyone uh, that will hear this clarion call, that as we enter into Lent, remember that the focus for your personal life is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. When we get away from that, we lose the very focus that we need to sojourn through this wicked and terrible land. Uh, Lent also comes as a time of refreshing and a time of washing, a time of almsgiving, a time of repentance and self-reflection. My prayer for you and I today is that we emerge from Lent better than what we went in, that we will be able to truly give God praise and thanks for giving us what we need so that you and I will be able to really lay hold to what my Lord and what your Savior did on a hill called Calvary on a day we call Good Friday and what he accomplished in the grave according to scripture after three days and bringing deliverance to those that were captive in hell and coming back from a revival there and being resurrected so that our preaching is not in vain. Thank God for this season. You know, every season of the church, I really do enjoy. I enjoy Advent, I enjoy Lent, I enjoy Pentecost. I enjoy the Easter tide season. I enjoy the time of ordinary time, which is the time of the growth and the matriculation of Christ church on the earth. But there to me personally is probably not a more meaningful time in the life of the believer than to reflect and be able to recapitulate what Jesus did for me. It goes beyond a microphone and a pulpit and a position, but it's personal. Because one day I was sinking deep in sin, but Christ saved me. Now, does that make us perfect? No, it does not. But it certainly puts us on a pathway called righteousness. And when you get to the point that I've reached, where it's more personal to work out your soul's salvation than it is to be gifted and talented and called, then you put your focus where it really needs to be so that you and I can be better people at the end of this season. So I leave you with these words. Remember that the kingdom of God is at hand. And the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but joy, righteousness, and peace in the Holy Ghost. So I would like for you to, if you would, just put in the comments and tell us what you want God to do for you personally during the Lent season. If you're a member of this great church, you know that we take these high and holy seasons very serious because it is the very substratum, the very essence of who we are as Christian believers, as believers in a resurrected and powerful Christ that died so that you and I could have a right to the tree of life. Think on that today during this Lent reflection. 
and make sure you put down, put your testimony in that. And you don't have to get too personal because we know you can't really tell the saints what you really need God to do because that's, it's just not um, uh, meaningful to a lot of people. And some people will capitalize on your uh, need to grow and they'll make just and, and, and play with what you need God to do for you. But be encouraged today to just put what you need God to do. I want to grow in faith. I want to be better with patience. I want to uh, be able to love my enemies a little bit better. I want to be able to uh, love my family better than I need to. I just need to pray more. I need to study more. Put it in the comments. Don't be ashamed because the truth of the matter is if you are living, if you're on the road called straight, the sanctification is a progressive work of the spirit. So we believe, according to scripture, nobody's perfect. Not I and not one person watching me. But as long as we keep our focus on growth and being able to know the love and grace of Jesus in the Lent season and what the resurrection provides for you and I, then we're better than when we first began. I'll see you again next week for our next Lent Reflection.